everybody. Andy Sachs here with Around Town Real Estate and Keller Williams. Now I'm joined by my friend, Dory Carolyn. Dory, thank you so much for, for taking the time out. Dory is the, is it the executive director? Is it the title-ish? Yes. And founder. And, and founder of the Newtown Parent Connection. But it is, as I've learned before we hit the record button, it is so much more than just Newtown. Uh, going on 25 years, thereabouts. Um, and, and Dory, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, th there's no time limit on this, uh, but give us... Give us a little bit of what we already spoke about. Give us a little bit of, of the history. Um, share what you think is appropriate and kind of where we're going and and, and let people, because I'm in the five minutes we spoke before I hit the record button, um, um, and I just made a comment. We live in bubbles and sometimes there's bubbles inside of bubbles. We choose not to hear or see, which I guess plagues this nation in many ways, but we choose not to hear and see problems that exist right next door. Right. Um, so take, okay. take, it, take it away. So the organization started in 93 when my son Brian was in the early stages of his addiction. We had moved from New York um, in his sophomore year and um, he really had a hard time uh, making that transition. So unfortunately he met up with the wrong kids and he started with drinking and doing smoking a little bit of pot. Um, his first rehab was in his senior year. And um, in his senior year, the teen center, we had a lot of kids that were going to the teen center and my friend Jeannie was in charge. And she'd say that, you know, a mom came by and said her son is drinking and smoking and she doesn't know what to do. Do you think you can talk to her? So there were about three or four parents that wanted to get together. So I contacted Bob Tendler and Bob was gracious enough to allow us to use his building. And we'd get together, share stories, and really embrace one another and support one another uh, because back then, no one talked about the drug there's, issue. There, there was no one to talk to. There was nothing. Right. And when you went around and you talked to people, they would say, oh, the kids that are, that are smoking and drinking are the kids that come from the families where the parents don't care what they're doing. Right. So... Um, Right after that, um, we ended up having a meeting um, at Town Hall, not Town Hall, the meeting, the meeting house. Um, Guttmeyer started, was very active with Parent Connection, and he ran the meeting, and we filled the meeting house, and we talked about what was happening with our children. And we said that we really need to band together. So uh, we went to the school system, and many changes were made uh, back in those years. They got a security guard. They had um, uh, procedures as to what would happen to you if you brought drugs into the school. And, you know, I'm not sure back then that the school took a very proactive um, – I, I think that they wanted to – more or less appease us because they knew that things were happening, kids were dying. Right. Um, but it was not the school's place to really take a hard stand. They felt that it had to be done in the community and with the families. So in 99, um, my son Brian ended up uh, passing away from uh, prescription drugs, which was given to him by his psychiatrist. So there we go with the other part of it, that you know, the HIPAA laws, they do not allow us to communicate with physicians that, you know, if he's a drug addict, he never should be on certain medication. Right. Uh, in 2003, which that was really when Parent Connection was born, uh, where we did education and we did support, there were 13 deaths. In Newtown. In Newtown and the very close surrounding areas. And we knew at the time I was working at the gym. So everyone, I knew all the kids that were coming out. Right. I knew the kids that were outside smoking before they came in. And um, so back then um, we wanted to educate the community and tell people how bad the problem was. But we were two moms. When we went to the local newspaper. By the way, they, nothing more powerful than two moms. Just saying. Okay. So when we went to the newspaper, they said, we would really like to run an article, but we need someone to back you. It has to be the superintendent, the chief of police, or the su supervisor. Someone had made a comment to us that, um, you know, I, I think everybody experiments, but 
the kids that are using drugs, or the kids that are being dropped off on Friday nights at the movie theater and the parents aren't, you know, concerned about what they're doing and where they're going. <clears throat> so I ended up going to the local rehabs in the surrounding towns and getting statistics. Newtown's numbers were the highest of Ridgefield, Bethel, um, Danbury. So we had enough information to start getting articles uh, in the paper. Some of them uh, we wrote, some of them the, um, B, uh, the local B took care of, and the, and the Danbury News Times also. So, you know, at that point, my personal life, my husband, I had three kids in high school. My husband said, you need to really be careful. You know, you're dealing with drug, you're dealing with drug addicts, you're dealing with drug dealers, real estate, what's going to happen to the real estate in the town. And it was in the early stages that the Newtown Board of Realtors sent us one of the early donations which to us was a confirmation that what we were doing was okay. Um, and we started Parent Connection. We ran weekly meetings at uh, Newtown Youth and Family Services building down in Sandy Hook at the time. Um, you know, we started out with four parents that were there and it's grown into sometimes we have 20, sometimes we have 40, depending on what's going on. Uh, and those are weekly meetings that are um, faci facilitated by a substance abuse counselor. We have been doing educational forums for years. I mean, and our educational for forums are not about drugs. We have done so many on uh, parenting, uh, discipline. Um, uh, we brought in someone from Massachusetts who, who talks about our busy lives dads are working hard to provide for their families. We have moms that are working. So the kids are left when the kids come home from school, mom's busy making dinner. And sometimes we don't take that time that we need to take to really give our kids the attention that they need. So what, what has, so Parent Connection, born out of necessity, born out of your own experiences um, and trials and tribulations and, 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 and a place to you know, where there was a need and a place to put your energies um, is kind of how I'm interpreting this. And, and from just the place where parents could connect who were having troubles finding anywhere to talk about the struggles they had, how big is it now? And, and what is, what is the, I guess it's still an epidemic, right? But what is, what is, what are our challenges now here locally and in the area and have they improved in some regards? You know, what, what are we, what are we experiencing now? Well, right now we have COVID, so COVID has taken away from uh, the, the drug, drug problems and the vaping problems. And I think what we really tried to share with parents is, number one, it takes a community to make a change. It can't be me with my drug addict son. Um, I'm, I'm trying to protect my kid, and I may help someone else's kid. But it has to be businesses, it has to be the police, it has to be everybody banding together to keep our community safe. And that's why we did a lot of educational programs on parents need to be educated on the signs and symptoms. So you're not finding out when your kid is using heroin. Uh, we know that most children t turn to drugs when they lack self-confidence or they're not doing well in school. And who's better than a teacher to notice a, a children's eyes when they're sitting in class and their pupils are dilated or constricted and they're dozing in the classroom. That's where it needs to be reported to someone and maybe have a team that um, they monitor these kids and, and so we work is, together with families. And, and so what has, what, what has been created from a protocol standpoint from these long efforts ago with just two moms, who's involved now from a community standpoint that wasn't around then? I have to say that both chiefs, the chief of police, both of them have been very, very um, receptive and um, uh, the supervisor, uh, both our current supervisor, Dan and Herb Rosenthal uh, have been wonderful. And the same with um, the, the um, educational system. I mean, Lori Rodriguez, we have had the support 
we just hired a um, kids in crisis program. It was a um, $85,000 project to bring in a counselor to work in the school system who was not part of the school system. She was an outside source. And she would work with any kid who had problems at home, drug problems, not feeling good about themselves, suicide. They were available 365 days a year. That's great. So, you know, we don't advertise all that we do. We don't advertise, we try and advertise our forums. But I think the biggest thing that I'd like to get across to people it's early awareness, education. We run a, um, a family fun night once a year in September, which I don't think we're gonna be able to do it this year, but it's for the younger parents. We have a DJ, we serve uh, a pasta dinner, we make ice cream sundaes, they play games. No electronics are allowed in the building. You can't, dad can't take a call. Um, nobody's sitting there looking at their Facebook page. Uh, it's just a time for parents to play, do the games and dance with the kids and ha have fun with, with uh, whoever is attending. So with all, the, with all these efforts and, and collaboration with uh, police and education um, and government, what, where, what is the state of Newtown today? For the last three months, it's very, very difficult to let's take, let's uh, take COVID, let's take COVID okay. out. Of it prior COVID. to that, prior to that, I think the big thing was vaping. That I think most parents felt vaping was better than my kids smoking and didn't realize how danger, dangerous it really was. We ended up running programs in, uh, in the Fairfield school system. We did two separate programs. We did one in Newtown. We were scheduled to go into um, New Fairfield uh, in March educating parents of how bad it is. And when we did the programs in the school system, we had kids that would drop off their vaping pens and give it to the guy that was doing the presentation. So it was powerful. And, and, did, um, and this was a similar response from, from the heroin before that. You know, where, where I, guess, I guess the question really is a, a, a larger scale. What, what are the school systems like? What are the kids today? I mean, what, are our, what are our challenges? Is it I mean, is, is heroin not as much of a concern or? Okay, or? here's a perfect example. We know that many of the kids are smoking pot. Yes. And we know that we're in the process of probably legalizing it in Connecticut. Right. So you have families who know that their kids are smoking pot. We know that pot's been, we know that fentanyl is everywhere. Yes. So if my kid is, we've had a couple of parents who say, if my kid is smoking pot, I would rather do whatever I have to do to get them on safe pot. So they take them to a doctor. There are two physicians around that you can go to um, and who are able to get you the marijuana card. You have to have, you have to go see a, a regular MD. They have to give you some sort of diagnosis that depression or anxiety. So it's very, very easy to get a marijuana card. Hmm. So, you know. Is that a good thing? I don't because I think it's still illegal and you, what you're telling your kid that it's okay to smoke pot right. and I'll, I'll take care of it. So I know you're smoking safe pot. Right. Instead of something laced with something else that might right. make you addicted to something else. So I think of many, many of the deaths, most of the deaths, I mean, uh, last year we had five people that were part of our group whose parents were educated, whose kids overdosed and died. And it, all of them had fentanyl in the... And just, just to be clear, though, for anybody watching this or reading this as it gets transcribed, that's not just in Newtown, though. Uh, well... Or is it? No, because we have people... One of the kids was in Florida. Um, he, his parents lived here. We sent him to Florida. Many of our kids go down to Florida because there's a better continuum of care there. Hmm. Or, or it, it's more affordable. So you can use your out-of-network... Uh, insurance and we can get them to stay in treatment for almost 60 days and then go into an outpatient and uh, live in a, a halfway house, sober house. Right. It, there's a large community, a large recovery community in Florida. And then things in Florida got a little dicey. So we reverted back to uh, keeping kids in, in Connecticut. Right. But 
we have a great success rate. If we can convince parents that wherever they go, they stay for six months. So, you know, obviously you can't afford to keep your kid in treatment, but you can afford to uh, pay for a couple of months of sober living and then they have to get a job and they support themselves. If a, a kid can put in six months, the chances that they stay clean are pretty good. That's great. And that's what I think I learned because my son was probably in eight or nine different treatment facilities, 28 days, and he'd be home. Never went to a sober house because back then they really weren't doing that. So there was no, opportunity, there was no opportunity for him to learn, to relearn right. the habits and the feelings and the... Right. And we know today that 30 days, they're still not feeling well. Mm. It takes them about 18 to 24 months before their body gets back to normal. Really? And if they started using, if they started drinking and smoking at the age of, you know, it used to be when we first started, we were seeing kids that were 19 to 23. That was the age bracket that, you know, they, they pop pills or they use sure. heroin. Now we're seeing that kids are starting at the age of nine, 10 years old, smoking pot or drinking. Wow. So, you know, as a parent, you can take lots of precautions. You can keep your liquor lock, uh, locked up. You can learn about the signs and symptoms when their eyes are red or, you know, and, and that's what we want. We want people to come out early and learn about it, especially if you have a lot of kids. Yeah. You know, if you have three or four kids, the chances of one of those kids doing something are pretty good. Right. And it's, it's so, I'm just, I'm all I think about my kids, you know, it's, it's such a scary, uh, scary world. Right. It really is. And it, it forces you to, you, know, you think, the, I, I use the term all the time. I love my bubble. Right. And um, the bubble's not impervious, unfortunately, to everything else that goes on. And I have to say that, um, you know, when Pat Lodra, was in office, um, there was some grant money that was available to another foundation and they couldn't take it. So Pat with our chairman of the board were able to uh, get us a $500,000 grant to do the building up at Fairfield Hills, which is just a beautiful, beautiful building. Yeah. And um, so the support is there. You know, um, I can't say that I've ever called town hall and, and ask the supervisor to do something, uh, the first electman, when he hasn't done it. If we're having something big, he'll send out an email. And I, I, I think everybody feels that we need to do this together. Yeah. And this is everybody's we would, problem. We would like to see more people get involved, more businesses get involved and support us. Um, but, you know, our golf tournament was started when my husband passed away. And my son wanted to do something in his memory, and he figured he'd get his friends together and they can tell stories. Right. So when he did it, he said, Mom, I'll charge a little bit more and we'll just make a donation to Parent Connection. So this will be our 11th year of, of the golf tournament. We really don't advertise, which I think we need to ch change that. And um, instead of having 75 to 90 people, wouldn't it be great if we could get 150 people? Absolutely. And um, especially since we haven't had the money this year uh, because of our gala being canceled, right. um, we have a lot of things that we really are looking to do in the upcoming months, in the upcoming, probably not till next year, I think is well, where we're going to be. I think uh, so, so much of lives will be delayed and, and all of efforts will be delayed, but uh, the good fight will continue. I mean... Right. Now we have a bereavement group also once a month for anyone who's lost a child. And that's probably our biggest group. I mean, we have people that come from all over and um, just both groups are so embracing. And, you know, when someone first calls to say that, um, is this parent connection? I need to talk to someone. Trying to get them to walk through the doors of a meeting is very, very difficult. But I can guarantee anybody who comes through those doors is going to be embraced and they're going to walk out feeling 100% better than when they walked in. Yeah. And we're all there for the same reason. Yeah, absolutely. And it's confidential. We, we try and, you know, encourage people not to um, discuss anything outside of the room, uh, especially names. And uh, it, it's, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been a great thing. It's wonderful. You, Dora, you continue to do great things for this town. Um, 
and, and of great, you know, so many things in life of, you know, great challenge becomes, you know, great greatness arises. And um, I think you're changing lives and parent connection is changing lives and hopefully saving many along the right. way. So I appreciate you and I appreciate your time and story. And I'm sure I'll see you soon. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, anybody can check out our website at um, www.newtownparentconnection.org. And um, my cell phone is on there. I take calls anytime during the day, in the evening. Um, Thank you, Dora. Please don't be alone. Appreciate Thank you, Andy. Don't be alone. You're not alone. I like, I like that.